Welcome dear students, I am Mr. Abhijit. In this practical session, we are going to see preparation and standardization of analytical reagents. So let us see the practical. The aim of this practical is preparation and standardization of analytical reagents. This practical we have divided into two parts, preparation part and other is standardization part. First of all, we will see what are the chemicals required for this practical? Concentrated HCl, sodium hydroxide, oxalic acid and phenolophthalein indicator. Then some of the apparatus is also required that is burette stand, burette, pipette, conical flask and beaker. Now we will see part 1 that is preparation of solutions of different concentrations. As we know there are different solutions, they are prepared by using different methodologies. Like some solutions are having particular normality, percentage, molarity. So how these solutions are prepared that we are going to see in this part. Before that we will see some important definitions and formulae. First that is molecular weight. So it is the sum of atomic masses of each element present in a molecule. We will see one example that is molecular weight of sodium hydroxide is 40 gram. How the molecular weight of sodium hydroxide that is 40 is calculated. The atomic weight of this sodium is 23, oxygen 16 and hydrogen 1. If you make a total of this 23, 16 and 1 it comes as 40. That's why the molecular weight of this molecule is 40 gram. Similarly, we have calculated the molecular weight of H2SO4 that is 98 gram. We'll see the next definition that is equivalent weight. It is molecular weight of substance divided by its valency. Let us see an example. Equivalent weight of sodium hydroxide is 40 gram. As we have calculated the molecular weight, so we have to divide the molecular weight by its valency. Means suppose that acid is there, it is having basicity. This OH is having one basicity and if suppose there is acid, it is having basicity. That's why the 40 divided by 1, it comes 40 gram means equivalent weight of sodium hydroxide and molecular weight of sodium hydroxide are same. Then we will see another example same for sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is having equivalent weight that is 49 gram. How? Because if you see this H2SO4, two hydrogen atoms are donated that is why the valency of these two hydrogens considered as two. And therefore, if you do this calculation 98 divided by 2, it comes as 49 gram. In this way, the molecular weight and equivalent weight are calculated. Now, we will see what is normality. It is the total number of mole equivalents per liter of solution. It is given by symbol capital N. Normality is equal to gram equivalent of solute divided by volume of solution in liter. Now you have to consider the gram equivalent of solute. Consider the example of sodium hydroxide. If we want to prepare the one normal solution of sodium hydroxide, then what we have to do? We are using its molecular weight and equivalent weight. As we know, the equivalent weight or molecular weight of the sodium hydroxide is 40 gram means to prepare one normal solution of sodium hydroxide we need 40 gram of sodium hydroxide means if suppose 40 gram of NaOH is dissolved in 1 liter of water means 1000 ml of water then the corresponding solution is one normal NaOH. If you want to prepare 0.1 normal NaOH, 
that is again 1 liter solution then you have to use 4 gram of NaOH in this way you can change the amount of NaOH and amount of solvent to prepare the different concentration solution now we'll see the next that is molarity it is the number of moles of solute per liter of solution molarity is given by capital M the formula is molarity is equal to moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liter now we'll see one example preparation of H2SO4 solution suppose if we want to prepare the one molar H2SO4 solution then how it is prepared for this we have to use moles of solute means its molecular weight and we know the molecular weight of sulfuric acid is 98 gram if we use 98 gram of H2SO4 to which if we dissolve up to 1000 ml of water then we will get 1 molar H2SO4 solution and accordingly you can change the concentration and amount of H2SO4 used. Suppose if I use 9.8 gram of H2SO4 and if I dissolve it in 1000 ml water then I will get 0 0.1 molar H2SO4 solution. In this way you can prepare the different solutions having different molarity. We will see the next definition molality. The spelling is different here molarity and it is here molality. It is the number of moles of solute per kg or 1000 gram of solvent. Now this is different concentration molality and molarity are different let us see the symbol it is given by symbol small m now suppose if i want to prepare one molal h2so4 solution so what i need to do is i have to use 98 gram of h2so4 that i have to add in 1 kg of water means here the concentration is different if you see here 98 gram plus here this 1 kg of water that you will get 1 molal H2SO4 so this is the difference in molality and molarity in molarity in previous concept that we have seen there you have to dissolve this 98 gram of H2SO4 in 1 liter water but here you have to dissolve or you have to add this 98 gram of H2SO4 in 1 kg or 1000 gram of water this is the difference now we will see the next definition that is percentage solution it is the presence of particular gram of solute in 100 ml of solvent it is given by percentage suppose if i want to prepare x percent solution then i have to take x gram of solute divided by 100 ml of solvent now suppose i take an example if i want to prepare 20 percent of naoh solution then i have to use 20 gram of naoh and that i am going to dissolve in 100 ml of water so i will get here 20 percent NaOH solution in this way by using the particular gram of solute you can dissolve it in 100 ml of solvent you will get the desired amount of percentage solution now we'll see the second part of this practical standardization of solution here we are taking the example of NaOH with oxalic acid. So why standardization is needed? Because NaOH is the secondary standard solution 
which if we prepare for one normal it cannot show the exact normality the normality changes with temperature or pressure and this oxalic acid is a primary standard solution if we prepare the particular normality solution of oxalic acid it is having the exact normality so to standardize the solution we are using oxalic acid and we are standardizing this NaOH so this standardized NaOH we are using in the next part for titration that is titration with HCl now we'll see the procedure we have to divide this procedure into three parts first preparation of standard solution of 0.1 normal oxalic acid and other solutions like 0.1 normal NaOH and 0.1 normal HCl then standardization of NaOH that is titration between oxalic acid and NaOH and third finding the strength of HCl that is titration between NaOH and HCl first preparation of solutions so oxalic acid 0.1 normal solution is prepared by dissolving 4.5 gram of oxalic acid in 1 liter distilled water 0.1 normal NaOH is prepared by dissolving 4 gram of NaOH in 1 liter distilled water and similarly 0.1 normal HCl is prepared by dissolving 3.65 gram of HCl in 1 liter distilled water now we'll see the standardization of NaOH so this is the titration so why we are standardizing this NaOH because it is secondary standard solution we have prepared 0.1 normal NaOH but it is not exactly 0.1 normal that we have to check with titration so the titration is in between the oxalic acid and NaOH so first you have to take 10 ml of NaOH by pipette in conical flask if you add 1 to 2 drops of phenolphthalein indicator NaOH solution becomes faint pink in color because phenolphthalein indicator shows faint pink color in basic range then you have to titrate this faint pink color solution with oxalic acid from burette then the color disappears when you add oxalic acid drop by drop with constant shaking note down the reading as x ml in this way you have to take three readings now we will see the observation table so in this observation table if you see this first column that is serial numbers we have to take three readings then volume of NaOH we have taken 10 ml NaOH each time that's why 10 ml oxalic acid volume that is IBR means initial burette reading it is 0 and final burette reading that is the reading that we have to write here after color disappears and the difference is written in this end point so whatever the mean is there that mean is calculated and written in the last column suppose if you have taken the first reading and it is 9.8 ml if you have taken second reading if it is 9.7 ml and if you have taken the third reading it is 9.9 .9 ml then the difference that is FBR minus IBR 9.8 minus 0 it is again 9.8 ml it is 9.7 ml it is 9.9 .9 ml if you take a mean of these three readings the mean of these three readings is 9.8 ml now this v2 means 9.8 ml reading that we have to use in calculation so we'll see the calculation part as we have performed the titration between NaOH and oxalic acid this is the standardization of NaOH that's why NaOH versus oxalic acid so we have to use the formula N1V1 
equal to n two v two, n one that is the normality of NaOH that we have to calculate, v one that is volume of NaOH taken that we have taken ten ml, n two is normality of oxalic acid that is zero point one, and v two that is volume of oxalic acid added from the burette. As we have taken the three readings and mean. It is V two means it is nine point eight. So we have to put this in the calculation part. That is nine point eight. That is the volume of oxalic acid added. Then, if you arrange this equation for n one, it is zero point one multiplied by nine point eight divided by ten. Therefore, the normality of sodium hydroxide is it is zero point zero nine eight. normal that is nearly equal to 0.1 normal now we'll see the next part of this titration that is finding the strength of hcl now we have to use this 0.098 in the upcoming calculations so to find out the strength of hcl we have to titrate sodium hydroxide solution with hcl so we have this sodium hydroxide solution that is 0.098 normal now you have to take 10 ml of hcl by pipette in conical flask then you have to add 1 to 2 drops of phenolphthalein indicator as there is a solution but the color is colorless then you have to titrate that colorless solution of hcl with naoh solution from burette color becomes faint pink then you have to note down that reading in this way you have to take three such readings that is as y so these readings you have to put in the observation table so this is the observation table so similarly in this final burette reading suppose if volume of nh added is 9.9 again we have taken the second reading that is 9.9 and if suppose if we take again the third reading it is 9.9 then the difference is again 9.9 for each reading that is in ml so if you take the mean of this the mean of this titration is 9.9 so we have to use all these readings in the calculation that is the strength of hcl so as we have seen the titration between hcl and nh therefore putting the formula n1 v1 is equal to n2 v2 as we have taken 10 ml hcl therefore we have to use this in calculation n1 that we have to find out multiplied by 10 n2 that we have calculated in previous part that is 0.098 and v2 that is the volume of nh added in the second part that is 9.9 ml so if you arrange this equation for n1 then it becomes 0.098 multiplied by 9.9 divided by 10 therefore the normality is 0.097 this normality you have to use in calculating the strength of hcl therefore the strength is equal to normality multiplied by equivalent weight the strength is calculated as the normality therefore normality we have calculated 0.097 multiplied by 36.5 that is the equivalent weight of hcl and after multiplication it comes as 3.54 grams per liter in this way after observations and calculation you have to put these in result normality of hcl is 0.097 normal and the strength of hcl is 3.54 grams per liter in this way the standardization and preparation of different chemicals is performed thank you